Welcome to Time Perspectives, The Matter of Time. Time-based art environments, film, video, and multi-sensory installations have dominated many art and media exhibitions and festivals over the past 50 years. The effects of many of these works have produced new historical and theoretical frameworks for understanding our relationship to perception, embodiment, duration, and temporality. Such works also conjure a rich array of contemporary writers who examine our relationship to time from divergent perspectives, including French philosopher and cultural theorist Paul Virilio and German media scholar Lutz Kopnik. While Virilio's The Aesthetics of Disappearance examines perceptual gaps demanding illusions of continuity and posits a hyper-opportunity for the production of art and speed, Kopnik's On Slowness explores slowness as a critical medium to intensify our temporal and spatial experiences. This presentation will explore four time-based media artworks which register multiple layers of time, duration, and motion, and offer altered modes of aesthetic perception and representation. Perception is not something that happens to us or in us. It is something we do. Think of a blind person tap-tapping his or her way around a cluttered space, perceiving that space by touch, not all at once, but through time, by skillful probing and movement. This is, or at least ought to be, our paradigm of what perceiving is. The world makes itself available to the perceiver through physical movement and interaction. The first work is by Victoria Vesna, entitled Noise Aquarium, developed in 2018. The work responds to data that demonstrate how different noise sources influence microscopic marine organisms. Noise Aquarium spotlights animated 3D models obtained with scientific imaging techniques of the diverse plankton spectrum. The ecological crisis is a human crisis. Many are aware of mammals such as whales and dolphins and about chemical and waste pollution, but often ignored is the invisible and the inaudible environment that is deeply secluded. Therefore, in this installation, Vesna and her team have created 3D enlarged plankton to be the scale of whales. In addition, they amplify the noise of these creatures as participants move closer to the animations to simulate how these organisms might experience and perceive this anthropogenic noise. This is a highly interdisciplinary artist-led effort with biologists, chemists, a nanotoxicologist and an animator all working together towards a common goal, and that is to raise consciousness. The audience is immersed in noise with plankton and plastic floating around. When an audience member steps on the interactive platform, one of the eight plankton species appear enlarged and responds to movement. The underwater noise pollution destroys the plankton unless the person centers him or herself. If centered, the plankton comes forward and we hear the solitary whale song, top and bottom of the food chain connect. The next work is by Adam Hogan and Laura Staten, Before, After, from 2020. It is a digitally mastered experimental film using 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter scans and an electronic score created with very low frequency antennas composed using an ambisonic toolkit. Exploring fragility and trace through motion picture film and atmospheric electrical signals, the work is comprised of a collection of damaged frames or torn perfs, sprocket holes, splice tape marks, scratches, dust, sprocket damage, and other evidence of decay on film from restoration projects compiled over the last two years. Through the digital restoration process, this kind of damage is typically removed to resurrect or to preserve films or artworks, and so therefore it is typically unseen. But this erasure, naturally evocative of the cosmos, inspire the creation of a score that directly engages the ionosphere and space by using custom VLF or very low frequency antennas and receivers. <laughs> The third work is by Alexa Velez called Ocean Noise. 
Ocean noise offers an affective, immersive experience of the sound of ocean waves crashing. This deceptively evocative soundtrack later reveals that it has been produced in a sound recording studio using large plastic bags, a nefarious source of ocean pollution. These bags are cleverly crumpled, man manipulated, and later slowed down in a recording studio to maximum effect to evoke the sound of ocean waves. And last is my own work, a collaboration with Axiomi Sung Ho Kim called Dark Skies. This is a multimedia collaboration that was first shown at the California Nanosystems Institute Gallery at UCLA's Art Size Center. It's a piece that's motivated by the existence of light pollution defined by the International Dark Sky Association as an excessive amount of obtrusive artificial light, which affects sleeping and feeding patterns, brainwave activity, and cell reproduction. The work takes as its title an astronomical reference referring to remote places free of hazy city light that allow for an extended view into deep space and time as a unique perceptual and psychological experience. This is an image from 1994 when a 6.7 magnitude earthquake crashed the power grid citywide in LA. The sky was flush with cosmic bodies that had been invisible up until that point they look so sinister that citizens called 9-11. This is how light pollution is distributed on the world map. And this is a scanning electron micrograph of a wild mouse taste bud that I took myself. And this is the point of departure for this work. This taste bud of a vespertine creature, that is one that comes out at twilight, was abstracted. Digital models were made and then a sculptural CNC routed projection wall was produced. First installed as a prototype, the work consists of this large scale digitally sculpted wall, two high resolution video projections, and multiple soundscapes that emanate from speakers positioned throughout the installation. Activating both the visual and the oral senses, Dark Skies invites a close meditation on the visceral qualities of key cinematic moment in the 24-hour clock, and that is sundown. Though the projection wall itself is modeled after the taste bud of the wild mouse, given the right angle and proximity, the visually ambiguous wall appears to fluctuate in scale between the microscopic and the gargantuan. And with this fluctuation, the viewer's sense of bodily scale also fluctuates between the minuscule and also the monstrous. The two videos projected at oblique angles on either side of the sculptural surface reveal two distinct time periods between twilight and sunrise, a condition that can only exist by way of technology. The immersive environment provokes an affective alignment of the visual and the acoustic rhythms found within submerging the viewer in a complex sensorial experience. Under the conditions of our contemporary product-oriented civilization, time does indeed have problems when it is perceived as being unproductive, wasted, or meaningless. Such unproductive time is excluded from historical narratives, endangered by the prospect of complete erasure. This is precisely the moment when time-based art can help time to collaborate, become a comrade of time, because time-based art is, in fact, 
our FaceTime. Thank you.